The biology of renal cell carcinoma continues to evolve, and it certainly has over the past decades. Initially felt to be immunogenic, um, it was treated with interleukin-2 and interferon predominantly. Um, this somewhat um, left our attention over the past 10 to 15 years as we as the science underlying the most common subtype of renal cell carcinoma, that being the clear cell histologic subtype was elucidated um, in a famous science publication from 1993 as being associated with the von Hippel-Lindau gene. Lack of function in the von Hippel-Lindau gene, whether it's acquired somatically at birth resulting in the hereditary von Hippel-Lindau syndrome or sporadically for reasons we don't fully understand yet, um, lack of function of that gene results in increased hypoxia-inducible factor that ultimately gets transported into the nucleus of the cell and gets transcribed into a variety of pro-growth and pro-angiogenic factors, most notably VEGF. And so for the longest time, it seems, we've been focused on VEGF inhibition as being a primary driver of the biology of at least the most common subtype, that being clear cell. Kind of running parallel to that understanding was the recognition that there are these other um, histologic subtypes. We, we um, collectively call them non-clear cells, but they have their own natural histories, their own genetic abnormalities, and their own responses to therapy. And they were kind of sitting out there as orphan illnesses, if you will. We could still use VEGF inhibitors for them, but we would expect the response rates to generally be lower. Um, now enter the past five or six years when really immunology has taken off in cancer where we've really um, been able to now at least manipulate some of the checkpoints which actually take away um, the, the immune breaks that cancers seem to put on the immune system. And we have discovered that, again, our past would tell us that it would likely be this way, but we've discovered in kidney cancer that indeed it is such a cancer in which these immune checkpoints are very much at play, at least in a large group of patients. And so we've been able to design monoclonal antibodies that target either the PD-1 or PDL one or actually other components of the immune system, such as CTLA-4, take off the um, break for the immune system. And, and we've seen now responses, some of which are durable in kidney cancer. So in 2018, when one asks a question about biology, we're looking at both immunologic um, um, areas as well as the underlying VHL mutation as a driver um, and it's a very exciting time so you can imagine combination approaches that not only combine various um, types of immune stimulating agents but also that target VEGF plus combine it with an immune stimulating agent are, are certainly in the mainstream and we are anxiously um, enrolling patients onto these trials and hoping that we can push the bar up even further in both responses, complete responses, quality of life, progression-free survival, and the elusive overall survival or cure. When we think about clear cell kidney cancer, it's long been understood as a disease of loss of VHL or VHL or von Hippel-Lindau, which is an E3 ligase for HIF, or hypoxia-inducible factor. HIF is a translational factor that is critical for things like the hypoxia response and generates multiple growth factors, including VEGF, and that is really the central dogma of most of the targeted therapy that we do. However, when we think about inhibition of VEGF, um, you know, this is still fairly removed from the original inciting um, mutation that caused it. So there is this gap between um, what the actual target is and what we're actually attacking. So the holy grail, as they uh, say, for uh, identifying which patients are more likely to respond to which therapy is still elusive. Uh, because our therapies, while effective, for a good number of patients. Unfortunately, they do not produce the desired effects for every patient. And they do have adverse events that may be challenging. So it's important to identify or predict which patients will benefit from which therapies. So, so far, while this is a laudable goal, and it's important to identify those predictive markers that can help us or guide us in the selection of therapy for the patient 
that we think will most likely respond to that therapy were not there yet. 